it's time for my March favourites. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my March favourites with you. It's always funny, I always like, every now and again I'll get to a stage where I feel like, are these videos still relevant? Do people still like them? Because I used to love favourites videos. They used to be my favourite video to watch on YouTube. I, I'd be really excited for like the first of the month. Whereas I feel like a lot of them have dwindled. But I always find that when I'm like, hmm, is this something that I should still do? I always feel like I have stuff to talk about. So, interesting, eh? Anyway, we have got a few bits to talk about today. It's a lot of makeup and a lot of tools. Let's get cracking, shall we? So I'm gonna start with a base product, and this is an oldie but a goodie. This is like one of those things which I started using because I wanted to use it up, because I had it, I've had it in my collection quite a little while now, and it was one of those things where I was like, obviously I don't want it to go bad because I remember it being a good product. Anyway, this is the Clarins Instant Concealer, and I've got it in the shade 01. Uh, when I bought this, this was the lightest shade, um, so, the reason I wanted to mention that is I can't sort of like highlight under my eyes with it. This is a perfect concealer for sort of like around the face. Um, you also get 15 milliliters of it. Is it 15? Mm-hmm. So that's basically half a foundation, which I think is really cool. So um, I also find this product, it's really, it is really skin-like. I wouldn't say it pulls dewy or matte either way at all. I feel like it is very skin-like. Do you know what? I feel like this would be like the perfect concealer for my mum. I think she would really enjoy it because she doesn't use like foundation or tinted moisturizer or anything. And I just feel like, particularly if you want your, your skin to do the shining, I feel like this would be just a really good, like this is the only base product that you need. I feel like it would work wonderfully if you want to like mix it in with your moisturizer, kind of like a, a medium to make your own tinted moisturiser and it's just like a really good comprehensive concealer. I've personally been using it, I've had like a few um, spots around my chin recently so um, I've been using this to cover it up and it's worked wonderfully but also yeah it's just a really nice concealer and again it's a really good size so um, although obviously it's from more of a premium brand obviously you're getting you know typically two to three times more of the product than you would a standard concealer. Anyway so it's one of those things I've been using up and I want to mention because I've sort of fallen back in love with it and I'm almost sad to see it go because I'm almost done. Anyway, there's that. Now I'm going to do a bit of jumping around because I want to take you on a little makeup journey that I've been on this month. So I'm going to talk about a tool. Now this is the Surat Eyelash Curlers. Now I'm not going to lie to you, I've had these a very long time and they've kind of been gathering dust to be honest with you. I go through phases with using eyelash curlers and then not using eyelash curlers and as you can probably tell it's in my favorites i'm very much in a phase of curling my eyelashes and these are fantastic eyelash curlers i think there's quite a few that are known as like the top dog ones like whether it's the surat the shiomura the the oh my god Shiseido, there we go, got it out at the end. They're often considered sort of like the really, really good ones. These are the ones that I have and they are really, really good, I think. And I also think a lot of them are around the same price mark, which is around 20 pounds, which for a tool that, you know, you don't particularly have to clean. I mean, I'm obviously talking personal use. I'm no makeup artist. You know, it's a tool that you don't really have to do a whole lot with, except for maybe change the band once in a while. So I actually think that's a fairly reasonable price for a tool that you could use day in day out and you know unless something really untoward happened to them you wouldn't really need to replace them anyway so it is more eyelash curling that i've been into but these are the ones i have and they are phenomenal i've just really been noticing a difference with my eyelashes um from curling them so um i think i was in a little bit of like an eyelash rut and i thought oh why don't i try curling them and then I did, and lo and behold, I'm a little bit more in love with my eyelashes than I was at the beginning of the month. So, yeah, this is something that I've been reintroducing into my routine, and I would particularly recommend these ones as well. So the reason that I wanted to mention those first is using eyelash curlers is what has, um, in part, inspired my next favourite. So one thing that I had been noticing prior to even using eyelash curlers is I guess I've been coming a little bit complacent with my liquid eyeliner. So I wear liquid eyeliner most days and I have for 10 years. It's one of those things where I sort of do it and it very seldom goes wrong for me, touch wood. I mean, it's just been a lot of, lot of practice to be honest with you. But one thing I've been noticing, and it's, you know it's one of those things which I'm very certain very few other people would have noticed, but I noticed and it's my face and I put makeup on for me. So um, was that I was leaving a gap in between my lash line, like sort of where my lashes come out of, <laughs> your lash line Alice, um, and sort of the black, and because I wear black mascara, black eyeliner, there was this sort of like thin, almost like grey, not quite coloured in part in between, and it just looked a bit 
weird like it just looked un incomplete like it looked like i'd like not like i'd taken eyelashes off and it had like ripped off the eyeliner underneath but it was just like a little niggle that i kept noticing anyway and i don't know if you've seen on instagram if you're in the uk this advert's probably come up for you um it's an advert for a bbc3 show called glow up and it's got val garland and i don't know who the gentleman in it is um and they're just talking through some beauty terms in this like little advert and one of the ones they mentioned was tight lining and i was like Do you know what i haven't tight lined my eyes in years so a favorite is an eyeliner it's a black eyeliner and this was my first eyeliner love the pencil liner although i have moved on and lived my best life with liquid liner the first liner that i had was one of these bad boys so um this is uh mark jacobs eyeliner now this came as part of the sephora birthday gift last year so that's the reason why i'm using this one and it is a good liner although there are really good drugstore liners available so it's not particularly this liner that i'm talking about although it is good uh it's just a black pencil liner of your choice and just tight lining which you know again as i mentioned in the sabbath they explain what tight lining is so it's basically lining your waterline but on the top and it sort of like makes your lashes look a little bit thicker and also it helps sort of cover up that little in between that i kept noticing um, and also particularly when you then introduce eyelash colors into it it does take a little bit of your liner off a little bit i've sort of been definitely when i've definitely when i've been curling my eyelashes i've been using this but also just even when i'm not wearing eyeliner like liquid liner you know i i will sort of run this along um my top waterline so it sort of like thickens things up a bit which is a technique that i used to do all the time and it's just i don't know again if it's sort of complacency with your day in day out makeup you sort of think like oh does it make that much of a difference but actually um it has been making a difference to me so sorry i feel like i've been like hunched over <laughs> so properly alice so i've been really enjoying that and then along with that i've reintroduced this into um my lineup and i know for a fact i have mentioned this pencil before and how i use it so this is the charlotte tilbury color chameleon bronzed garnet I, I think it's like an eyeshadow pencil but i do use it just as a chunky eyeliner it is like one of those thicker ones and what i've been doing is before I put mascara on my bottom lashes, just sort of like running it, not in my waterline, but like right, like almost like on my waterline. I personally am a big fan of, particularly if I'm doing eye, um, eyeshadow on the top of my eyes, I really feel like it ties it together when you have stuff on the bottom. So I do usually run whatever eyeshadow I've popped through my crease underneath my eye as well. But I feel like adding this, and I'm talking this step takes an extra three seconds, and I, I'm talking I go do 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 Done. I feel like it just adds just like that little bit much more depth. So the colour chameleon eye sticks, part of their sort of marketing is for it to go along with eye colours to make your eye colour stand out. Now this one's personally for green eyes. I personally have hazel eyes, but obviously in some lights they can look green. So, and I quite like my eyes looking more green than brown or orange or anything. So um, I quite like that side of things as well, but also it's just the colour as well. Like it's a sort of a deep bronzy red, bronze garnet titles in the name um, but yeah so i've been really enjoying just sort of doing that little extra step which i can understand that for a lot of people it might seem like a little bit more of an extra faff but honestly like it takes oh sorry i can't stop playing with my hair i've just washed it but yeah it's been one of those things where i those like literally just using those two little pencils and taking yeah i mean in total an extra 10 seconds on my eye look has made for me like a really big difference i feel like i I feel like everybody must sort of get a little bit complacent with their makeup day in day out and I feel like that sort of made me re relight my fire. It hasn't like relit a fire but <laughs> although I have fiery eyes I don't know I just feel like it's really tied it all together and I'm really enjoying how my eye makeup's been looking just simply down to these three tools. Anyway uh, that is uh, oh, that is not I was gonna tell you that was the last of my makeup that's a lie it was hiding under something else i wanted to talk about my z palette uh, or z palette depending where you're from which i'm fairly certain i have mentioned definitely in a makeup tutorial before but i don't know if i've mentioned it in a favorites video um so i bought this z palette off of beauty bay i think it seven pounds something like that and inside um i believe i've spoken about this before in regards to the three bigger shades here which are Anastasia Beverly Hills contour pan. So I bought, I think like everybody did like three years ago, the Anastasia contour kit and I just wasn't using it. 
and I needed a contour powder, but I already had these contour powders like in my collection, but because it was sort of in this big palette that didn't have a mirror in, I realistically wasn't reaching for it. So that's why I ended up purchasing, oh, hello. Um, that's why I ended up purchasing one of these so it could be more compact and easy to carry around um, But then I've also as you can see popped in these two colors here now I'm really curious if I've put these in a favorites before Either way, I am still loving this is still the pet palette. I'm using daily but Yeah, so I have that contour shade um, and these two shades here are also the Anastasia ones as you can see here I use this sort of as a, a base to set my both actually my under eye concealer but also uh, my eye primer i really like having a when i'm doing eyeshadow i like to have like a powdered base a to set the eyeshadow primer so um when you're blending any colors over it it doesn't sort of like stick just to that part but also i find it adds another level of blendability because it's almost like you're blending it into your skin tone because this is my skin tone i find that that makes it just blend that little bit easier because it has something to blend with uh, but yeah, so that's why I've hit pan on that because I use that every single day But I mean I also use this one as well, which is the contour shade um, Which I've really been enjoying but also I'm just sort of giving you a whistle stop tour The real hit row that I wanted to talk about was this shadow here So this is by a brand called Nabla Cosmetics. I have never heard of them I, I got it on Black Friday on Beauty Bay. They were just sort of doing like a pretty decent sale site-wide so I picked up this because I wanted to go into this palette a couple eyeshadows to have as well so I don't have to carry around like a big palette or anything and I picked up these two but the one in particular I want to talk about is Paprika which is the one in the middle it's what I've got on today and this is like my daily shadow these days and it is an orange like it's I guess fairly bright but I don't think it's too like neon or anything like that I find it really easy to wear during the day I just blend it with a nice big brush through my crease. I do also have, um, I believe this is called Petra. Yes, it is. Also in here, um, sort of if I wanted to deepen things up and get a little bit more fancy, but just for daily use, I'm really enjoying Paprika. And just this setup in general, I feel like um, I've been, I haven't felt the urge to play with eyeshadows that much because I've just been enjoying having this little palette. And yeah, I just, I would encourage you to make your own. Um, although it's a bit, I guess, frustrating is, because this, I mean, these palettes aren't for, consumers they're for uh, pro makeup artists predominantly but you know beauty base for everyone right so they don't have a mirror in like i would i would prefer this to not be a clear case so i can see what's inside i know what's inside um i would rather this be a mirror personally but i understand why it's set up like that i would just personally yeah if this had a mirror maybe they even have some that are mirrors actually is their palette I'm, I'm certain they probably do they'd be foolish not to to make ones with mirrors in, although I guess I could stick a mirror in. Anyway, yeah, it's just something that I, yeah, use day in, day out, and I feel like I've mentioned it a few months ago, potentially, but I just wanted to let you know that it's still something that I'm loving and using. I don't have any skincare favourites to talk about. I think a lot of them are the same. I mentioned the Ceramidin liquid in my previous favourites, I believe, and I'm still using and loving that predominantly. Actually, that is a bare face lie. I just told you a bare face lie. I do have a skincare favourite to talk about. What am I on about? Hang on, hold please. Ugh. I do have a favourite to talk about. This is the Alex Steinher Plump and Go Facial Inner Stick. I'm unsure if I've spoken about this before. I feel like I might have. Um, but as you can see, I'm using a lot of my stuff up at the moment, so go the planet. Um, anyway, so this is, it says a facial inner stick. It's effectively a stick cleanser. Um, so it says emulsify with water to remove makeup or leave on for a plumping and moisturizing effect. Now I would not leave this on my face. Um, yeah, it's basically a balm cleanser in a stick form. I've got none left. Um, and the reason I wanted to recommend this is this is the cleanser I took away with me when I went to Amsterdam recently. So I thought this would be an utterly phenomenal cleanser to travel with. Um, so how I personally use it is like, I'll just sort of have my makeup on like this. I will run the stick over my face. So it is a balm cleanser, but it does have like almost, it's like a little, it's, it is a little gritty. So I feel like that almost kind of works like a manual exfoliant. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll run the stick over my fingers and then use that to take off my eye makeup because I wouldn't put this directly on my eyes. And I sort of do that twice. So then I like rinse that off and then I'll go over it again. And it's just really, like it's not gonna spill, it's really tiny and it's really like handy. I just, I think, and it's a good price as well. And it's, you don't get tons and tons of product. Like I don't know if you'll be able to see sort of, yeah, you would probably go through one of these if you used it every day in a month, I would say. 
uh, but sort of as something for traveling like if you're traveling over summer I feel like this is something really I would recommend to get your hands on if you go to festivals all that fun stuff um, that comes along with summer I feel like if you still wanted a sort of wash off cleanser rather than something like a micellar water this is something I really would recommend for that because you're still getting that balm cleanser quality consistency type product but in something that is incredibly portable and easy to use as I said I would not recommend using it like leaving it on your skin unless you've got like super duper dry skin but even then no I, I don't think that sounds silly to me, to me honest like this type of product I would absolutely never leave on my face but um as a cleanser to remove makeup it does it really well it doesn't leave your skin feeling stripped or anything but like predominantly why I am recommending this is just because it was fantastic to take on a trip with me moving on to hair stuff I've got I had I had to do one of those like weird boots hauls you know when you're like I've got like a little like random non-fun personal care stuff to get like deodorant and toothpaste but I also wanted some hair clips. So I've got two types of hair clips to talk about. Um, so I'm going to start with these ones first. So these are my favourite type of like sectioning hairstyle clips. These are the type of clips that I'm using if I'm styling my hair and I want to use to section my hair. Um, so you get these in a pack of four. I have two in my bedroom and I have two in my bathroom. So what I like to do, because I've got quite a lot of hair, um, when I'm letting like a, con a concealer, listen to me, a conditioner or a hair mask in my hair, I like to um, sort of twist it up and stick it up almost like in two little buns on my head so I can sort of I don't know like wash my body do a body scrub so I can let that sit in and because these type of clips they sort of they're I don't know how to describe them like this is not this like has a little spring in it so it can really hold there we go you can see there um it can really hold quite a lot of hair um I do like to use two at the same time I mean you get them in a pack of four so it's easy peasy um and then I also like having them uh, in my bedroom again like if I'm just trying to get my hair out my way and I can't find a hairband but also if um, I'm styling my hair what have you I feel like these are the type of clips that are my personal favorite so I would recommend them and um, these are the boots own ones so they wouldn't have been that expensive at all um, but then I also do have some sort of going out clips that I wanted to talk about um, and this is completely inspired by my housemate so she's got completely different hair to me she has short blonde hair quite often she'll use like these tiny little claw clips to um, sort of like pop her hair up and sort of style it and I wouldn't I mean again because they're different hair I wouldn't have styled it the way that she does she kind of almost uses it like to keep it up and out like kind of like a bun but um I saw these and I thought oh do you know what like I've really been really enjoying sort of hang on I'll show you just almost using them to sort of like clip my hair back like that on either side and yeah sort of make it a little bit I don't know, just shake things up a little bit with my hair because typically I just wear my hair down. I, and I mean, I've got straight hair today, but when I've got wavy hair, that's something I quite like to do because it adds just like even more texture to it. Um, and again, these weren't that expensive either. I believe these were by Scunchy. I don't think the boots that I went to had their own, but I'm very certain a lot of boots would. So hair clips, I just think also with summer kind of like it will, how I do it, like it will sort of like clip my hair out my face a little bit. And yeah, what I'll do is I'll sort of um, back comb my roots a little bit. So it has a little bit of volume. Anyway, I've been really enjoying how that looks. So I thought I'd recommend those as well. Um, I do have kind of, I guess, one more beauty tool to talk about. I've messed my hair right up now. Um, I do have one more beauty, kind of beauty tool to talk about. Do you know, I literally, I know I've been saying this this entire video, but I feel like I have mentioned all of these things before. Um, anyway, this is a, um, towel headband so I've been using this whilst either putting my makeup on or taking my makeup off just keeping my fringe out my way and um, out the way because I'm sure my fringe girls will know how much of a, a faff it can be when you're sort of trying to wash your face and your fringe is just constantly in your way um and I these really weren't that expensive I think a lot of times you can get these for free with like gift sets and stuff but also um i mean personally i got mine off of amazon i think i got a pack of three for a fiver i've got sort of like one in my bathroom one in my bedroom it's just a little tool that i've been finding really easy and also you know they're sort of like made of like towel material so you can just bug them in the wash if you get any makeup or or cleanser or what have you on it um but yeah also yeah if you're like sitting there with a clay mask and you're not washing your hair after it's just, they just come in handy and I've been enjoying them. And last but not least, I've got one lifestyle favourite and that is the Couch to 5K app. Uh, so I have only done three runs. I've completed week one, but I thought I would mention it. Um, I also thought I'd let you know that I am sort of vlogging my process and how I'm feeling after each run and stuff like that. So um, that will be with you shortly. 
But um, but yeah, I just feel like, you know, the sun's really, I mean today the weather's gross, uh, but the, the sun really has come out and I just sort of felt like it was something that I wanted to incorporate because although I've sort of got my eating sort of a bit more uh, in line these days, I feel like exercise is really where I'm lacking, i.e. I don't really do any. So um, it's, a, yeah, if you don't know what it is, it's an app where you have, it's basically like a guided run um, and you can like listen to your own music while you're doing it. Anyway, I've got a video, I, there will be a video up of me talking all about it soon. But spoiler alert, I've been not enjoying it. I've been proud of myself for doing it. And I'm not gonna say that it's been easy because it hasn't because I do literally no cardio at all. But it's been something that, it's been a good influence on me. Um, I listen to Joe Wiley. Joe Wiley is my guide. Yeah, guide. Let's go with it. Why not, right? Also, if you have any running apps, running apparatus that you would recommend, I am in, I am like such a novice, like such a novice. So um, I would love to hear any tips or tricks if you have any. Anyway, that is everything from me today. Um, if there's any type of videos you'd like to see from me from the coming months, please leave those down below. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, I shall see you soon. Bye!